Hello folks. In this video, we're going to continue talking about our aggregation iterators. We just spent some time talking about it. We're going to continue talking about it. Okay. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I am here in iterators.xlsx. I'm in the aggregate B tab, and we're going to continue to talk about our top uh, four common iterators right here. Sum X, max X, min X, and average X. We'll get to filter in a little bit. These are our four aggregation iterators. They all aggregate um, our expression column. So the reason we're focusing so much on this uh, is there's going to be a lot of places in DAX where it's going to try and convince you that w DAX works differently than I'm showing you right now. And what I want to do is really drill into your head this notion of revise the filter context, derive a temp table, add a column to it, and iterate. Because if you could see that, it's going to be much, much easier to keep in your head the very simple structure of DAX and understand how it works, even when you see some code that maybe suggests otherwise, which we'll get to a little later on when we talk about sum X versus sum. Okay, so yes, I'm doing this for a reason. We are repeating ourselves for a reason. So uh, speaking of which, let's repeat ourselves a little bit. Show some more examples of this builder pattern. So here in problem eight, we're going to um, we're gonna get to go distinct dishes sold. So I want to know how many different dishes did we sell um, for to-go sales. Now, not the number of units, just the no, t number, no, number of total different kinds of dishes, right? So uh, what I'm going to do here is we're going to start by revising the filters, make sure we've got a filter context of type equals to go. Well, if I look up here, right now we're in type equals dine-ins, we've got that filter context. So click on this second button, to go, and now our filter context has one filter for type equals to go. And these are some of the possible derivations, right? Given that filter context. And now what I want to get is the values of the mini dish column. Now, before we were just working with this derivation where we got all the visible rows of a particular table. Now what we want all the visible distinct values of a particular column, specifically the dish column. So if you'll notice, even though uh, for our entire day, we sold pastas, burgers, and salads, if we're just looking at to go, we sold pasta and burgers. And then we have a bunch of duplicates of burgers right there. So if we ask for the values of that column, well, then we just get the distinct values that are visible, which is pasta and burgers. So let's go ahead and click on that. Control C to copy it. Click right there where it says drop temp table just below. Control V to paste. Okay. We've derived our temp table. Now we're going to add this column to it and sum up the results to get the total number of distinct dishes. So here under expression column, go ahead and do equals. Just type in one and hit enter. Easy as that. Click on that cell, grab the fill handle and drag it down, right? So uh, this thing where we, for our expression column, we just we use the number one. This is how we're gonna get row counts in DAX. This is the easy, effective way to get row counts of a particular temp table, okay? So we wanna know how many rows are in this table. Well, we got one for every single row. Then we're just gonna add it up because this is the sum X function. So click right there, do equal sign, sum, and go ahead and double click on sum or hit tab or finish typing it out. Select those cells of the expression column, add closing parentheses, and hit enter. So it turns out if we're just looking at to go, we had two distinct dishes that we sold. Okay. So now let's do the same thing for uh, dinner, right? So we're going to revise the filter context, derive this temp table, add this column to it, and sum up the results. So let's set the filter context to shift equals dinner. So we're going to revise the filter context. Boom, we revised it. Now we've got a filter context that has one filter for shift equals dinner. Our derivation is all of the visible rows of the dish column in the mini table, right? And this time, uh, we've got three dishes. A second ago, we just had uh, pasta and burger. But if we're looking at dinner, people bought burger, salad, and pasta. Cool. Okay. So click on that, those cells. Control C to copy. Click right there where it says drop temp table just below. Control V to paste. So we've derived our temp table. Now we're going to add this expression column to it and sum up the results. The add column and sum is the iteration part, right? This is the derivation part. Okay, so click right there. Do equals, one, hit enter. Click right there. Grab the fill handle, assuming your trackball works better than mine does. Drag it down so we get one for every single row. And if we take the sum of that, we figure out how many rows we had in this temp table, which will tell us how many distinct dishes we sold. So click right there. Do equal sign, sum. And either double click on sum, hit tab, or add your own parentheses, either way. Select those cells right there, add closing parentheses, and hit enter. So we sold three distinct dishes for dinner, right? Okay, so now on problem number 10, we want to find the single highest to go cost, right? Of all the cost of all of our different transactions, what was the one that cost us the most? Okay. 
So uh, we want to set our filter context to type equals to go. Right now we're in shift equals dinner. So click on type equals to go. Notice our possible derivations change. This time we want a good old reliable. Uh, this derivation right here, all the visible rows of the, uh, the mini table given the current filter context. Well, that's right there. So let's click on these. Control C, these are just the to go rows, right? Because that's what our filter context says. Click right there where it says drop temp table just below. Control V to paste. Okay, so now we've got a temp table with all our to go transactions. So now for every single row, we're gonna multiply the units times the cost per unit. And this time we're gonna get the max of that to get the biggest results. So click right there. Equals units times cost per unit. Go ahead, hit enter. Click on that cell and use the fill handle to drag that formula all the way down. Two times five is 10, one times six is six, three times six is 18, and two times eight is 16. So those are the costs for all of our different four transactions, right? And now instead of summing it up, we're going to max it, find the biggest value because this is the max x function. So click right there, do equals max, and either hit tab or double click on the formula or add your own parentheses, right? And now click drag, add closing parentheses, and hit enter, right? Now again, not the sum, but the max. 18 bucks is our single most expensive transaction. Cool. Okay, now let's do the opposite. We're gonna find the lowest cost transaction. Again, with filter context type equals to go. The only difference between this code and this code is up here we used a max x, down here we used a min x. Okay, so let's make sure our filters are right. We should have a filter context of type equals to go. If yours are good, don't change them. If somehow you accidentally clicked over here, be sure and click on type equals to go because that's going to affect our derivations. Okay. Speaking of which, let's go get all the visible rows of mini. That's that derivation right there on line two. Right, so click and select. Control C. Click there where it says drop temp table just below. Control V to paste to derive our temp table of just the to go transactions. And now for every single one, we're gonna, every single row, we're gonna add uh, that formula right there as our expression column. So click right there, equal sign, just like before. Take the units, multiply it by the cost per unit, hit enter, click there and drag that formula down, right? And uh, we get those results right there, right? So these are the costs for every single transaction. It's actually the same stuff we had a second ago. The only difference this time is before we took the max of this because we're using max x. Now we're gonna take the min of this because we're using min x. So click right there. Go ahead, do equal sign, type in min, and go ahead uh, and double click on min or hit tab or add your own parentheses, however you wanna do it. Select those cells right there, closing parentheses, and hit enter. And we get six bucks. That's our single lowest cost transaction, which is that transaction right there. Okay, so now, if you think thought uh, you knew where this was going, you probably guessed correctly. We've taken the max, we've taken the min, now we wanna take the average. The same filter context, it's still type equals to go. The same expression column, units times cost per. This time, oh, and even the same derivation, all the visible rows of many. This time, the only difference will be rather than a max and or min, we'll take the average of that column. Okay, so let's set our filter context, make sure it's set to to go. Uh, it probably is if you accidentally clicked over here or something like that. Make sure you click on this one so you get your filters just right. Revise the filters, get them correct. Type equals to go, okay. So now go ahead uh, and we're gonna derive all the visible rows of mini given this filter context of just to go, right? So that's right there. Control C to copy. Click underneath where it says drop temp tables just below. Control V to paste to simulate deriving that temp table. We're gonna add, now gonna add this column to it and average the results. So click right there, do equal sign. And it's each row's units times the cost per unit. So click on units, multiply it by the cost per unit, go ahead, hit enter, click on the cell and use the fill handle to drag that formula down. 10 bucks, six bucks, 18 and 16, same as before. The only difference is this time, as opposed to a max or min, we're gonna take the average of those results because we're using average X. Okay, go ahead, click there, do equal sign and type in average and either double click on it, uh, hit tab or type it all the way out, right? And we want the average of those cells right there closing parentheses, and hit enter, and 13 bucks. $13 is our average transaction cost. Okay, <clears throat> so here uh, we're gonna get all sales given a, a dine-in filter, right? So 
here, we're gonna change our derivation to one we haven't used before, right? We're gonna use this all of the mini table, right? So all basically says ignore the filters. So we're gonna have a filter context for type equals dine in, but because we use this derivation, it's actually going to ignore it. All right, so let's be good. Let's set our filter. Filter context should be type equals dine in. Well, right now it's type equals to go. So be sure you click on dine in. There we go. We've got the filter context just right. And now we're gonna derive our temp table. Add a column to it, sum up the results. What is our temp table? Well, it's not just all the rows of many, it's all of them. So we use the all function, right? Not all the visible rows, all the rows, which is this derivation right there. So go ahead, select those cells. Control C to copy. Click right there where it says drop temp table just below. Control V to paste, okay? And now for every single row, we're gonna take the units and multiply it by the price per unit. So click right there, do equal sign, units times price per. Go ahead, hit enter. Click there and let's go ahead and grab, grab the fill handle and drag it down. And we get the sales for every single row and then click right here and we're gonna sum it up because this is the sum x function equals sum, open parentheses, select those cells right there, close in parentheses, and hit enter, okay? So notice, even though the filter context was set to type equals dine-in, because we clicked this button and now we've got type equals dine-in, because we derived this temp table right here using the all function pointed at the mini table, we didn't get all the visible rows of mini, which would have just been the dine-in rows, we got all the rows, which includes both dine-in and to go. So when we added this column and summed up the results, we essentially ignored the filter context to get total sales for everything, for everything regardless of what the filters are. So with that in mind, we're gonna run the same exact code here for problem 14. We're just gonna change the filter context to type equals to go. We're gonna use the same derivation, add the same column and sum it up again, right? And you might guess at this point, because our derivation, right, ignores the filters, it won't matter what the filter context is, we should get the exact same result. We should get 100 bucks, right? Because regardless of what the filter context is, these derivations over here on the right-hand side don't change. That is the point of these derivations. So if I click from here to here to here, right? From there to there to there, you'll notice here on the left-hand side, these derivations are respectful, right? They're respecting what's in the filter context, right? But these over here on the right, they're non-respectful. They're not respecting the filters in the filter context. They don't change. Okay, so let's set our filter context to type equals to go. Make sure you select to go right there. And now we're gonna drive all the rows in me, not all the visible rows, all the rows, visible or not, which is this derivation right here. So click, Control C to copy, and click right there, Control V to paste. Okay, so we've got that temp table, we've derived it. Now the iterator is gonna add this column to it and sum up the results. So click right there, do equal sign. So click on units and multiply it by price per unit. That is the formula, the expression that we're gonna evaluate for every single row. That's why it gets the name expression column. Click and drag. Okay, so now we've got the transactions for every row and we're going to sum up the results. Equals sum. Okay, you can either double click on sum, you can add your own parentheses by adding parentheses, or you can arrow to it and hit tab, however you wanna do it. We want to sum up these results right there. Add closing parentheses and hit enter, okay? So if we use this particular builder pattern, right, where uh, we use a derivation uh, that uses uh, one of the non-respectful derivations like all of a physical table, right? It doesn't matter what the filter context is, we'll get the same results both times. Okay, so I think you've got a basic sense for this. Now we're gonna kind of uh, do, do some uh, uh, quiz time where we're gonna work backwards. I'm gonna show you some finished versions and we're gonna have to figure out which parts are missing. So uh, I'll see you in the next video where we're gonna do that.